France, 380 mm, 45 model 1935. France's final heavy naval rifle originated in 1935 for treaty limited capital ships, entering service on the Richelieu class in 1941, with additional barrels intended for the projected Gascon and Alsace classes. The program sought high power in compact armored citadels, which led to the characteristic quad arrangement that was structurally two paired twins to reduce turret armor weight. Each barrel weighed roughly 94 metric tons and measured 45 calibers with 80 groove right hand rifling and a chamber volume a little under half a cubic meter. The system was rushed into war. Richelieu's June 1940 trials consumed only a handful of rounds per gun before the ship evacuated with incomplete ammunition stocks and temperamental handling gear. Ammunition centered on 1949 to 1951 pound armor piercing and 1938 to 1949 pound high explosive projectiles. Early muzzle velocity sat near 830 meters per second, later reduced to 785 to 800 meters per second to manage wear and dispersion. Initial firing rates were about one round every two minutes per gun under combat conditions, later improved after refits to roughly one round every 32 seconds per gun. Tabulated ranges approached 41 to 46 kilometers at high elevations, with post-war figures near 36.5 kilometers at standardized velocities. Penetration tables show roughly 29 inches of vertical armor at short range and increasing deck penetration at long range. In simpler terms, a full four-gun salvo could pattern across multiple football fields. And with improved post-war firing delay coils, the spread at 26.5 kilometers shrank from about 5 to 300 meters, letting successive salvos scour several city blocks each minute. Combat use exposed ammunition faults more than gun design. At Dakar in 1940, premature shell failures came from base cap fractures on an APC model that used internal cavities. Lower pressure charges stopped the prematures, but cut range until redesigned APCs and foreign supplied rounds arrived. Richelieu refitted in the United States in 1943 and later fired with improved dispersion controls. Jean Bart received modernization and brought both turrets into service by 1956. Plans to evolve the weapon into triple mounts for Alsace never left paper. Germany, 38 cm SKC-34 Krupp's 38 cm SKC-34 was drawn up in 1934 to arm Bismarck-class battleships and adapted ashore as Siegfried-type coastal guns. The 52 caliber piece measured about 19.6 meters overall, the bore about 18.4 meters, and a complete two-gun turret weighed over 1,000 metric tons. It represented a conservative, well-engineered step that could accept a range of shell designs while operating within German handling equipment limits. Shipboard projectiles weighed around 800 kilograms, with bursting charges from several dozen to over 100 pounds of TNT, depending on fuse and shell type. Nominal muzzle velocity was about 820 meters per second for naval ammunition. Coastal batteries sometimes fired lighter shells at significantly higher velocities, pushing range and flattening trajectories. Practical shipboard firing rates of two to three rounds per minute per gun existed mostly on paper. In action at the Denmark Strait, actual averages per gun were closer to one round per minute once handling and fire control frictions appeared. Maximum ranges from ships were on the order of 35 to 39 kilometers. Coastal sites reached farther still. Scaled to terrain, a single 800 kilogram round with a large chemical burster equates to removing a reinforced concrete footprint the size of a medium warehouse. A full four-gun salvo at a brisk cyclic rate could rake a dockyard pier line in under a minute. Over 10 minutes, a coastal battery could strip the roof line off an industrial block. In service, Bismarck's guns fought in May 1940, and tear pits used them mostly for area fire and air defense, before tall boy bombs rendered the hull erect. Coastal installations on the Channel and in Scandinavia exchanged long-range fire with Allied guns and interdicted shipping lanes, but the class left no direct descendants. Italy, 381mm 50 on Saldo model 1934. Italy's 381mm 50 family originated in 1934 for the Littorio class battleships, with model 1934 guns serving Littorio and Vittorio Veneto and a model 1939 series for Roma and Impero. 
The 50 caliber rifles fired from triple turrets of roughly 1,570 tons. Unlike 38 cm guns elsewhere, the Italian bore was a true 381 mm. Construction mixed A tube and jacket methods, and later pieces accepted loose liners removable from the breech to speed maintenance. A well in breech and hydro pneumatic operation were standard. The battery fired 1,951 pound APC at initially high velocities, curbed from about 2,854 to 2,789 feet per second to mitigate dispersion and barrel wear, and an 1,817 pound SAPBC at even higher speeds. Rate of fire hovered around 1.3 rounds per minute per gun, with stowage around 70 plus rounds per barrel. Range was the showpiece. Even with moderate maximum elevation, Italian trials recorded some of the longest measured throws of any battleship gun, with APC and SAPBC reaching 46 to 52 kilometers in idealized conditions. Penetration figures reflected a fast projectile, solid belt defeat at typical engagement distances with increasing deck bite as range extended. The class could paint an elongated impact ellipse large enough to erase a several-acre rail yard switch ladder in two salvos. In a sustained one-minute cycle per barrel, a three-gun turret could replow the same footprint every minute until fire control corrected onto a point target or barrel heat dictated a pause. In combat, dispersion varied with ammunition lot quality. Latorio's patterns at Certe were reported as consistent at 32,000 yards while Vittorio Veneto's off Gaudo were more erratic, an outcome aligned with post-war commentary about non-uniform projectile manufacture. Short barrel life and wartime attrition ended further investment. The type ended with Italy's naval retrenchment. United Kingdom BL-15 Mark I. Britain's 15-inch Mark I originated in 1912 to arm the fast Queen Elizabeth class and other capital ships, entering service in 1915 and proving itself at Gallipoli and Jutland. The wire-wound, 42-caliber construction weighed on the order of 102 metric tons per gun and used a complex layering approach typical of the era. It served longer than almost any pier, bridging two world wars in ships, monitors, and coastal batteries. Ammunition massed about a ton per projectile, with various HE designs carrying sizable bursters and AP intended for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Practical shipboard cycle time settled near 36 seconds for around two rounds per minute in trained crews, and barrel life in the low hundreds of effective full charges was normal. Early mounts fired to about 21 to 24 kilometers, Later elevation upgrades and improved long-range shells extended that figure to 29 to 32 kilometers. The gun's reputation rested less on raw range than on dependable service and the fleet architecture built around it. Scaled visualization puts each impact as a one-ton spear that could crater a street corner and progressive salvos that could peel apart a coastal battery casement over a few minutes. In 1940, Warspite's long-range strike on Giulio Cesari at roughly 26,000 yards showed what careful fire control could do. By the late 1930s, however, heavier foreign designs and changing doctrine pointed away from modernization. The class remained in limited coastal service after 1945, but by 1959, Britain retired remaining batteries, turning to carriers, strike aircraft, and later missiles. United States, 16-inch slash 45 Mark VI. The American 16-inch slash 45 Mark VI began in 1936 and equipped North Carolina and South Dakota classes from 1941 onward. It was engineered around the heavy 2,700-pound AP Mark VIII, accepting a substantial HC round as well, and paired with three gun turrets in the 1,400-ton range. The barrel weighed just under 200,000 pounds, with chromium plating near the muzzle to lengthen life and resist erosion. Designed firing rates of roughly two rounds per minute per gun were achievable in training and occasionally in action, with long engagements tending toward 1.5 to 1.6 RPM. Ballistics reflect a deliberate trade. New gun muzzle velocity for AP was about 2,300 feet per second, lower than some foreign peers to reduce dispersion and improve penetration consistency, while HC reached about 2,635 feet per second. 
range envelopes extended past 40 kilometers on paper and were routinely usable in the high teens to mid twenties of thousands of yards in action with good spotting. The HE Round's 150 pound burster gave it a useful shore bombardment role. Viewed at landscape scale, a three gun broadside could erase the footprint of a school complex and sustained fire could open gaps across an industrial plant the size of several city blocks in minutes. In Casablanca, USS Massachusetts battered John Bart's incomplete battery and shore targets. At Guadalcanal, USS Washington used AP to break the back of Kirishima. Logistics were significant. Each turret demanded large crews and intricate power systems, and liner life was under 400 full charges. The type left service as battleships gave way to carriers and missiles. Germany, 40.6 cm-52 SKC-34. The 40.6 cm SKC-34 was conceived for the H-class battleships that never sailed. Built by Krupp and completed in small numbers, the 52 caliber piece shifted ashore as soon as the hulls were cancelled. Naval mounts were designed for ranges near 36 to 43 kilometers. Coastal adaptations used lighter shells at very high muzzle velocities. At standard naval loading, a projectile near 1,030 kilograms left the muzzle at about 810 meters per second. Coastal service with lighter rounds could exceed 1,000 meters per second, producing flatter trajectories suitable for long-reach harassment across the English Channel. Sustained firing rates around two rounds per minute were practiced. A battery could walk fire from a shoreline up into a harbor district in a few minutes, with single HE strikes tearing open a street segment the size of a small parking lot, and AP dedicated to hard targets where line of sight permitted. Operationally, the guns never fired from ships. Battery Lindemann, near Songate, fought a cross-channel counter-battery duel throughout the war, and Norwegian emplacements at Dietl and Trondenus remained active into the 1950s. The design's very high velocity limited deck penetration against heavily armored decks, and the collapse of Germany's capital ship program ended any fleet legacy. Post-war, surviving examples became museum pieces. Proposals to bore out to 42 centimeters for later H-class variants never left the planning stage. United States, 16-inch by 50 Mark 7. The 16-inch by 50 Mark 7 drafted in 1939 for the Iowa class and commissioned from 1943, extended barrel length to 50 calibers and paired with the three-gun turrets weighing roughly 1,700 tons. Gun weight, including breech, exceeded 120 metric tons, and the system accepted the same 2,700-pound AP Mark 8 and 1,900-pound HE Mark 13 used by the Mark 6, with propellant charges adjusted to the longer tube. Typical new gun velocities were about 2,500 feet per second for AP and 2,690 feet per second for HE. Practical shipboard rates were around two rounds per minute per gun. Standard maximum ranges clustered near 37 to 38 plus kilometers, while later extended range concepts and experimental sabots explored far greater distances. The battery could deliver precise long range patterns. In the 1980s, modernized fire control with radar based muzzle velocity tracking demonstrated tight groupings at 24,000 yards. In terms of ground effect, an HE impact can carve a crater large enough to drop a city bus on its side and three guns cycling together can, over several minutes, pulverize a football stadium seating footprint. The system served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, then returned in the 1980s with digital fire control and unique munitions, including submunitions, and, historically, a brief nuclear shell program in the 1950s that ended before the 1960s. The final operational shots came in 1991. Post-Cold War budget and doctrinal changes removed the class from service. Japan, 41 cm by 45 third-year type. Japan's first fully domestic large-caliber gun was drawn in 1914 and entered service in the early 1920s on the Nagato class. Plans to arm further classes were curtailed by the Washington Naval Treaty, and some completed guns later moved ashore as coastal artillery. The 45 caliber weapon weighed on the order of 100 tons, used a wheel and breech and settled into later mountings that loaded at a fixed plus 3 degrees with maximum elevation increased to plus 43 degrees in modernized turrets. Ammunition included an APC Type 91 near 1,020 kilograms and a common HE around 938 kilograms with relatively modest bursting charges by mass fraction. Muzzle velocities ran around 780 to 805 meters per second. 
Practical turret firing cycles ranged from a half minute to two plus rounds per minute, depending on elevation and handling cadence. Coastal emplacements achieved about one round per minute. Ranges spanned roughly 35 to 39 plus kilometers in tables, with penetration estimates at common engagement distances consistent with defeating pre war armored belts. Visualized against terrain, a single HE round could strip the facade off a building's corner apartment stack, while two or three guns working in sequence could rake along a pier and set fire to cargo sheds within a couple of minutes. At sea, the guns served onboard Nagato and Mutsu, the latter lost to a magazine explosion in 1943. Some AP shells were later converted into aircraft bombs, a subset caused catastrophic damage, though many suffered fusing issues. The design's service life ended as Japan focused on larger 46cm guns and the fleet faced attrition. United Kingdom, BL 18-inch, 45.7cm, Mark I. Britain's 18-inch Mark I, designed in 1915 at Armstrong's Ellswick Works, pursued extreme range for Baltic operations. Only three were built. One briefly went to sea on HMS Furious, whose light construction could not handle the overpressure. Two then armed monitors General Wolfe and Lord Clive, with the third kept for experiments. The 40 caliber gun weighed about 148 metric tons and fired projectiles near 3,320 pounds. Shipboard rate was about one round per minute in trials. Monitors managed one round every few minutes. Muzzle velocity spanned roughly 2,200 to 2,400 feet per second depending on charge, and maximum range sat near 37 to 40.5 kilometers. The combination gave the Royal Navy a niche tool for long-distance interdiction. In September 1918, General Wolfe fired at a railway bridge near Snaeskerk at 36,000 yards, one of the longest naval gunfire missions of the war. An 18-inch HE impact had the footprint of a small house. A day's firing could remove bridges, marshalling yards, or coastal gun pits across a broad arc without the platform approaching shoreline hazards. The type never matured into fleet service. Furious was quickly converted to carry aircraft, and post-war cuts ended any production expansion. One barrel later served as a test piece in sleevings and prototype work a path that ultimately informed interwar British heavy gun studies rather than a continuing 18-inch lineage. By the late 1930s, and especially after World War II, Britain, like other navies, had little appetite to re-enter the very large caliber space. Japan, 46cm 45 Type 94 Yamato. Japan's Type 94 46cm gun, designed in 1939 and entering service in 1941, remains the largest naval gun ever fielded. Official documentation during the war labeled it 40 centimeters for secrecy. Each 45 caliber barrel with breech approached 165 metric tons, and the construction used multi-tube, wire-wound methods that challenged relining and maintenance. Only 27 guns were completed. Most were lost with Yamato and Musashi. Projectiles included an AP around 3,215 to 3,219 pounds and a common HE near 2,998 pounds with muzzle velocities in the 780 to 785 meters per second range. Practical firing cadence of roughly 1.5 to 2 rounds per minute per gun was achievable in trained crews, while barrel life fell in the 150 to 250 EFC band. Maximum effective range hovered just under 42 kilometers, with dispersion at extreme distances still tight enough to make long-range patterns usable. Penetration at 20,000 yards remained sufficient to defeat very heavy vertical armor. HE effect radii and contemporary analysis approached 80 meters. At human scale, a single HE airburst could strip a city intersection of roofs and windows. Three guns cycling together could level a small warehouse campus in a couple of minutes. In battle, the guns saw limited fleet action, most notably off Samar, where they reached for distant escort carriers across a chaotic surface engagement. The ship's fates were determined by air power. Post-war, surviving pieces were studied and scrapped. We appreciate you watching. It genuinely means a lot. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who enjoy this kind of content. And if there's a topic you'd like covered next, let us know in the comments below.